Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Jimmy T today, and he is the founder of Little Iguanas. It is a children's foundation, and they keep children safe. Today, he has a great topic he's going to talk about, and he's talking about being proactive when it comes to parenting, how we could help our children be safe, and he's going to give us some great tips because you want to be proactive because you don't want to wait until it's too late. So he's going to tell us all about the tips and the different things that he has learned over the course of the years that he does with his foundation that's worked really well to help children be safe and live a happy and healthy, productive life. Before we go, I just want to do a quick shout out to our um, Happy Expo Wellness. Um, they're going to do a a wellness expo and it's called the happy wellness expo and it's going to be in Livingston, New Jersey. They're going to have over a hundred exhibitors and it's all about health products. Uh, coaches will be there. Doctors will be there. They'll have different technologies. You might even get a free massage. So check it out. They'll have some information in the description with a phone number and you can give the person in charge a call or you can go right to their website. Their website will be listed. So check it out. So Jimmy, I'm so excited to have you on the show. I love having you on the show. You give such great advice on parenting and how to keep children safe. Now, you wanted to discuss about proactive and being reactive and explain to the audience the difference between the two and explain why one is really more important and the different things that you had talked to me about previously. Well, you know, for so many years now, we'll be 30 years uh, this August and we've found out that as everybody in doctors and educators and parents, that proactive programs not only save the world money, but they save lives. And here's why. I mean, proactive is everything prior to, you know, the cause or what happens or the accident. Um, you know, you teach your children at a very young age in a fun way that they can remember things, everything about you know, who strangers are, or buckling up, or crossing the street, or being, you know, aware of your surroundings, and, and, you know, all the proactive things, the reactive are, you know, uh, the drug, you know, addiction programs that are now in teenager, or whatever, or the child who is in a coma from not following certain rules, or the reactive is, a child who's been hurt or taken, or even worse, we we don't know where they're at. And we, we as all adults, we've seen that, you know, you can't yeah. just go, oh my, that's so shocking and 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 bury your head into the sand. You, you can't do that. You, you really need to go the, the proactive prevention way. And this is some of the things that Little Iguana does. When we teach children, our focus is two to eight. And why is our focus always two to eight? Because, or two to 10 really, um, because at a certain age, your moral and your human being and your foundation for life is set, usually around age five, six, seven years old, okay? So we need to teach them in a way that they can understand, but things that don't scare them, but things that actually can help them, such as, you know, parents tell their kids, look both ways before you cross the street. Right. Has anybody ever like stopped for a few minutes and taken their child to the street or show them the crosswalk and stay there and say, OK, look left, look right, look left, make sure no cars or bikes are coming. And now we can cross the street and then you show them how to come back. Simple, right? Right. Like nothing. But more children die and are injured every year from being hit by cars. You know, I mean, so many children are, you know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 then you listen to people say, "Well, I told them a million times." Yeah. Well, did you show them a million times? Because we're all learned. We're all see. We we touch. We feel. We learn that way. Right. We don't really learn by someone just speaking at us. Yes. Or things like when they say, "Don't go with a stranger." You know, there's a bazillion people in the world that use the word strangers. So we use the word stranger only to identify what mom or dad or whoever it was in charge of you was explaining to you when they said, don't talk to strangers, because that right there, what does that teach a child? Right. Really nothing. Okay. Yeah. You said it, but you didn't actually teach them. So yeah. what, what you should do is you say, all right, 
sit down. We're going to talk about this in a fun way. You know, use some music, use maybe the little iguana music, use other program music. But usually we we urge people to use little iguana because it's tested and proven that little children can listen to it and absorb it. So you sit them down and say, you know, a lot of people say and mommy said or daddy said, don't talk to strangers. What we really meant to say is this. If someone wants you to go with them or do something with them and you didn't come to mommy and get permission right then and there or daddy or if you're at school, your teachers or grandma, mm -hmm. if you didn't get permission right then and there, that's what we mean by a stranger. Yeah. It doesn't mean that there's somebody we don't know. It could be somebody we do know. Right. All we're saying is if you don't have simple permission and permission is very easy for a child if you teach it this way. Again, yes. proactive. You tell a child, if you want to go with someone or do something with someone, what I need you to do is come to me and look me in the eyeballs and then ask if you could go with that person or if you want to go somewhere or do something. And then if I say yes, then you have my permission to go and that person is no longer considered a stranger. Right. And it could be someone we know even. It could be the next door neighbor. It could be the postman. It could be Uncle Bobby. It could be anyone in the world. Yes. What we try to do is make it very, very simple for a two, three, four, five-year-old. Okay. Yeah. We make it so it's eyeballs ask yes. Okay. I got eyeballs ask yes. They're not a stranger. I can go with them even though 80% or whatever the whatever study you want to show people that know it's usually abduction or somebody that you know that that is in their life and we get that that's why permission is taught this way anybody right. anybody you know makes it simple doesn't mean that they're bad people yeah doesn't mean that they're good people it just means that they're strangers that's how we consider them until we get permission right or, or even in in a car you know, I mean, a simple thing in a car, right? Buckle right. It up, right. Okay. So, you know, make, make a joke out of it. Make it fun. You know, hey, everybody, you've gone too quick. If you didn't hear the click. Oh, and the kids will jingle with it and they'll sing that. But when they get in their car, repetition, you know, the Pavlov's theory, you ring the bell, the dog salivates kind of world. You know, if you do it enough and you do it all the time. Then you just do it by natural instinct. You get in right. the car, you put it in the belt, everybody's clicked. Now I can go. But you also want to teach them proactively not to distract the driver. Because if you don't distract the driver and mommy's got to, or daddy's got to turn around and say something to you like, hey, can you stop? You could hit somebody. You can hurt somebody. You could, you could get in an accident and hurt your family. Right. So that's the proactive. You teach them in a way that they understand in a fun way, too, because you don't want to be mean and you don't want to be over shouting and, 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 and upset with them. You want to make it fun so that they understand that it's fun, yes. but it can save them because the reactive is, as we all know, the child who doesn't look both ways before he crosses the street, you know, and runs yeah. out, chases a ball, chases his friends, runs after someone. You know, just in, in the moment, in the heat of the moment, because they've never gone through those exercises of stopping, yes. looking left, looking right, looking left. They've never gone through that. So they don't understand how to do that. Right. And what happens? You get hit by a car. You get run over. You you injure. You get injured or worse. Right. Yeah. And all it had to do was be proactive. Right. All it had to do was take that five minutes couple times during the lifetime and say hey you know we need to do this you know that that person over there you know want, wants to say hi to you you know so we're going to get permission and we're going to go say hi to them because we don't want to make anti-social people we already have that with our children yeah so exactly children are so stressed as it is it's so hard to be a young kid these days yeah you know, me and you and, and and people around my age or a little younger than me when we were kids we got out of the house and we went away and we were playing all day and we, and we came back when the when the street lights went on right or, you know, or the fire whistle went off in our town, yeah you know and we had to be home by then okay so we got home by then nowadays it is so 
how many kids get to go out all day? How many, how many children is it safe to let them, you know, out? Yeah. You know? So we just want them to be prepared. We don't want them to be scared. We right. just want them to be prepared. We want to relieve less. We want to relieve the stress on them. Okay. Right. So the reactive is even, even in attitude, even in self-esteem, self-worth, like we teach, you want to teach it at a very young age, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, a four-year-old, a five-year-old, you want to build them up. Right. You don't want to make them spoiled brats. Exactly. You want to build them up with self-esteem and self-worth. And self-esteem and self-worth is this. Stacy says to Jimmy T, hey, Jimmy T, let's go behind over here and let's go do drugs or let's go do this or let's go hurt that person or let's right. go steal that from that person or do something. And because I've already had that proactive program in me where I'm taught that I don't do that because I have self-worth, self-esteem. I don't cave into that. So right. I say, well, you know what? I don't think so. And then they say to you, whoa, what are you, a baby? And you say to them, you know, because I have such self-worth, self-esteem, yeah, I really don't need to hang with this person because they're just going to bring me down and 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 if you did do that, usually down the road, you're ending up doing drugs, you're in jail, you're hurting people. Exactly. I mean, we see in society today, you see people kicking people that are down on the street, beating them. That yes. is totally unacceptable. Totally. I don't care what you are, who you are, anything. That is unacceptable behavior. Oh, As a human sure. being, you never hurt another human being. Right. You could stop them from hurting you if that's what you have to do, but you don't go out there and hurt other people. Right. And those are people where we didn't instill self-worth, self-esteem. So yes. they have none of that within themselves. Okay. Yes. So they're just so angry with who they are because they've never had that in life. Then now they're striking out no matter what, because it makes them feel better to make you call you a name yes. or to do things. Whereas in the old days, you would dream about helping another human being. You wanted to be the hero. Yeah. Remember the days when people wanted to be Superman or Batman or, yeah. or Rory Rogers or whoever it was in the world, right? Yes. I mean, you dreamt about being somebody that went to the moon. And, and nowadays, kids don't even have the dreams. We don't instill the self-worth, the self-esteem into them to have those dreams. Exactly. We put them down. We put them in society and we, we make you... You know, like I was saying before, you know, we, we don't talk about everything is monetary. Everything became monetary for some reason. OK, and I right. get it. Businesses are businesses. Even us, we need to make money and, and to do things and to sell a book or to do the things. But we we just put so much pressure on our children to, you know, you got to buy a gift for Johnny's birthday. Well, when they don't have money, they have no they feel like they feel like garbage. Because they right. can't go to a birthday party because they don't have that. You know, we need to start teaching self-esteem and self-worth is inviting your friends over and not expecting gifts from them. Right. Expect their friendship. Mm -hmm. Expect them to help you or to have a kind word for you when you're down. And you do the same to them. Right. Teach them that self-worth and self-esteem so that when they see somebody down on their luck or somebody sad or somebody crying right. or some sit or, or even sitting alone at a table at lunch and yeah. everyone else picked on those poor kids, but because your kid had such self-worth and self-esteem, they got off their butts. They went over and they sat next to that child and they made their day. They right. took it upon themselves to be that hero. Right. Okay. We don't have that anymore. I remember when I was a little kid, I'd sit with headphones. And this is how old I am. Sit with big headphones, listening to a record. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's that? You know, and listening to a record, music, and dreaming about being the hero of, of something or yeah. helping someone. I mean, we used to draw things as kids in school. And, you know, kids would draw saving someone in from a fire, a burning building. You know, I remember one boy in my class, he had, he drew a, 
him on a ladder and he was saving someone from the burning building. Yeah. I mean, it's like, where did that go? Why did we allow it to go away? So for us, proactive programs, always just the way to go. Yeah. Just, you know, just the way to bring to light um, safety and the well-being process so that we're not bailing kids out of jail for things or drugs or hurting other people or, or whatever it may be. And, yes. uh, you know, that that's all. I think it's so important to take a proactive, you know, because I think a lot of people don't realize that and they have children and they demonstrate, you know, certain behaviors in the house and they're, they're, they're not thinking about really, you know, the, you know, I see a lack of discipline a lot of times and a lack of, and, and a lot of families. And I feel like you really need to install these things from the moment they're a baby, because if you, if you're proactive and you start teaching them how to be safe, this is the way you need to do things. Always say, thank you, be polite, you know, do this, do this. It will, it will resonate and it will become a behavior as they grow up and become a young adult and in, into their elderly years. It'll, it'll stay right through. Absolutely will. I mean, for people that learn things at a young age, we all remember stuff we learned. So why could it not be good stuff that we learn? Right. And, and not, you know, see things, you know, parents always, I talk to millions of parents, you know, in my lifetime from, for little iguana. And I hear the things like I, I've told them a million times, but they don't show them. Or you're at an event and, you know, you, you're looking around and, and you, you say to yourself, my goodness, you know, kids are running crazy or, or a little two-year-old sitting on the ground screaming and yelling. And, yeah. and the first instinct was the parent handing them their cell phone, a cell phone or, or an iPad or, yeah. or something that doesn't, that's not proactive because now at 10 years old, they're going to sit down and cry, but it's going to be worse and bigger and and, and when it's 15, they're bigger. And when they're 20, you know, you, you can't give into it. It takes a million times to say no, explain why, you know, just don't say no, because I said so, you yeah. know, because that doesn't work either, because we want our children to be so darn smart, right? Everybody yeah. wants their kids to be rocket scientists by eight, by second grade, for goodness sakes. But then we teach them, you know, then we treat them like child children, babies, when they already now know more by fourth grade than me and you know. I right. mean, I couldn't even do my kids' homework at a certain age because they were like, wow, I mean, you know, you need a tutor and they're still in elementary school, you know, yeah. I mean, because we never learned the stuff that they learned. And and we right. were pushed through class and we were pushed through school, you right. know, just pass them, pass them, pass them, you know, and 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 if we learned, if I learned back then proactive prevention stuff, and I learned all the things that I haven't learned, I would have been so much better, even like being a good person or being a good parent. I mean, yeah. how many of us were taught how to be a good parent? That's right. proactive. That's prevention. 99.9% .9 of us had to learn it on the go. Yeah. You know, why? And that didn't work out very well for, for, for me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> It, it didn't, but, you know, that's why Little Iguana is so, so, so focused on prevention proactive, share it in a way that they can, that they can absorb it. Why music, you know, interactive, showing them, you know, what's that old saying, you know, you, you tell me as a child, and I might remember you show me as a child, and I'll never forget, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of how it is. It's yeah. You show them what you're trying to express. And then in any of them, in any of yeah. the lessons, you know, like we have a new book coming out called uh, the online secret. And it's uh, part of the series, the little iguana series. And the online secret is all about somebody's the parent, the parents told them little iguana about not being, you know, online and told them about things, but never really explained it. Yeah. Okay. They just said, you know, do this, do this, do this. They never explained what that meant. 
Right. You know, I didn't explain that. You know what? You might have some pressure from somebody that says that they're an eight-year-old little boy and they want to be your friend, but really they're a 25-year-old man trying to get your information and they make you feel bad. They make you feel like, you know, you're a baby because you, you're going to tell your parents or someone in charge. Well, those are the people that you need to tell because those are the ones that are the bad ones. Yeah. But we don't really show our children what that means. Mm -hmm. And we get kids that meet people or tell them that they go to the school or where they're at or, or different classes that they're in, you know, right. after school and stuff. And they don't understand that that is so dangerous in this world. I mean, yeah. and, and just like I said, just proactive teach them what you mean, show them, sit down, take the time. If it takes you a million times to do it, great. And if the, and if the kids do do it, make sure you take their privileges away because you right. can't reward them for bad behavior. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm the kid's just driving me crazy. He's got to use his computer. No, they don't. We didn't have computers and right. we came out just fine, except for the, the twitching and an uncontrollable sucking of the thumb and curling my hair. I mean, <laughs> that, I'm okay, but you know, you know, just, uh, you, you got to show them. Yes. And, and like I said, in a way that they can always remember that. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think that's, that's really important. And, and I think, you know, when you teach these children, like I said earlier, they will remember and they, you know, because if you don't, like you said, if you, if you're, you know, if you're retroactive and you're not teaching these children, they're going to grow up thinking that these behaviors are okay. You know, they're going to learn behaviors that are, are not safe, that are not good. And they're going to repeat those behaviors. And it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's not a good thing. You know, if their parents don't teach them how to be safe, if they don't learn, you know, through music and other, other ways that, you know, in the, in the future, you know, it's going to affect them. It's going to affect, and it's going to affect the way they, they raise their children. And it's, it's going to be a vicious cycle. You know, every day you see things about children who've been harmed, children who've been taken, you know, innocent children, you know, and then even with, with drugs, you know, you, there were so many times that you would hear, you know, this young man, he was a good kid, never did anything wrong, got good grades. And he, he got approached, you know, and, and, and he, he tried something and with the fentanyl and this and that, you know, he, he, he died right away. You know, that was a story in our area and, and, you know, the parents were devastated. Everybody was devastated. And, you know, the, no one ever, you know, spoke how dangerous it was and how dangerous drugs are and how, and how to say no, you know? And I think that's a big issue too, is that parents need to teach their children how to say no, you know, because a lot of times kids just want to be accepted and want to follow you know, and so the, all different age groups, you know, music could actually work for all different age groups. You know, the way you change the music, the way they get a little more hip hoppity as the kids get older, but whatever you, whatever you put in the beginning, you know, is what they're going to remember. You know, it stays with them. It really does. I still remember my elementary years, certain years, and, and I still remember the things I learned in those grades. Yeah. Well, absolutely. I mean, they used to, the things that we remember the most are the things they taught us in mu through music. Yeah. It's in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, okay. Or I'm just DeVille sitting on Capitol Hill or, or the junction junction, like we said in the, in the other podcasts. I mean, you remember that from your younger days and, and you will always remember that. You know, I always tell parents if, if your kids aren't listening to you, sing what you want them to know. I don't care if it's bad singing. Yeah. I don't care if you can't hold up your 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 tone deaf, right. deaf, whatever you call it. I don't care. You sing it to them and they'll remember it. Right. And, and, and you know, my kids will say to me, oh, remember that stupid thing you used to say to me, dad, when we were kids and that you sang it to us because we wouldn't listen to you. And then they sing it to me. And I'm like, well, I guess it worked, didn't it? You know? I guess it did. And it does. I mean, we've done shows. This is this is that proactive reactive. We did shows where we we went to a school and we sang songs about seatbelts, something simple. Buckle up, buckle up your seatbelt. 
I don't know, maybe like 11 years later, we're at an event outdoors at a giant uh, community event, singing and dancing on stage. And here's this 16-year-old kid in the audience making fun of us. And every time we were doing buckle up, buckle up your seatbelt, he would mimic us and he would yell it out loud, bad and everything. And people got all offended. People like, oh, how dare he do this? How dare, you know? Right. But you know what I said to everybody on stage and everybody around us? He remembered it. He remembered it. Yeah. He heard it one, one time. He heard it at a show that we did and his right. school. So I don't care. I don't care if he's mocking us and making fun of us. Right. He remembered it. We did our job. You did your job. That's proactive prevention. Because yeah. now you know he's wearing his seatbelt. If he's mm-hmm. singing a song, you know he's doing it. Yeah. You were saying about drugs. Yeah. How many communities? Everybody we know in this society knows someone that died from fentanyl or overdose or drugs. And like you say, the prevention part of it was they felt they they went and they, oh, my friend made me do this. Right. Or my friend asked me to do this. And I didn't want to look like a fool. Right. Teach them. It's OK to look like a fool. Yeah. Teach them that you're alive today. And not dead. Yeah. Who looks like the fool? Right. You know, and just because you want to fit in, you can fit in. Fit mm-hmm. in the way you want to fit in. Exactly. Not the way other people want you to fit in. Because right. you're not living your life that way. You're living someone else's life. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And if you teach kids at a young age, they'll grow stronger enough. And they'll stay in their brain and they will say no when that time comes. So it's like you could teach these things to the children when they're little and, you know, teach them to be a leader, not a follower. Teach them to say no. Teach them to look both ways. Teach them to wear a seat buckle. But all these things will stay embedded in their brain and it doesn't go away. They will remember. And those, you know, those um, ways of thinking will stay with them and they will become good people and they will become strong individuals that have resilience and they will actually be able to when they get to the point where they become older have the strength and have the ability to say no and i don't care what you think you know i don't want to do it i don't you know this is how i'm going to live my life because we have so many followers you could just look at society today we have so many followers and not enough of good leaders and we, you know, leaders, we can mold these children when they're young. That's when you should mold them to be good leaders. And and you could do it through music. Why not? You know, that's the best time because it'll stay embedded in their brain. They'll remember it. All these little lessons, they'll remember. And that will bring them to be their own person. It will make them stronger. And it will make them a leader one day. And a person who could say no when the time comes, if that time ever comes. Sure. And then they don't feel bad. They already have the strength and the and the self-worth to say no and feel okay about themselves. And exactly. You no, know, hey, I'll be the driver. I'll take everybody home. No worries. You know? Exactly. I'm still gonna dance. I'm still gonna eat chips. I'm still gonna, you know, do whatever it is, but I'm not going to have to do the other things. And I'm okay with that. I, right. I feel good about myself. I feel good about everything. And you need to hang around with people that accept you for that. Yes. Don't let them put you down. Don't make let them push you into something that you're not or or you don't want to be. And this way, you feel good about yourself. Because people don't realize that when they are doing things that they really don't want to do, it eats them up inside. Yeah. It really does. And, and mentally, it's not a good thing that, you know... You know, you talk to people, why'd you do that? Ah, well, you know, so-and-so, you know, you can never let them do that. You you, you have to be whoever you are yourself and, at it, and, and, and teach them again at a young age with music, just like proactive, again, compared to reactive. Right. A little girl goes into our program, comes up on stage, does run, 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 yell and tell. Mm-hmm. Eight years go by, she's walking down the street, a level three sex offender tries to abduct her runs into the store, yells and screams. If that proactive program that we did was not embedded in that little girl when she was eight years old, she would not be here today. That level three sex offender would have gotten her. 
Right. But because the proactive program went and said, you know, run, 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 yell and tell when someone's trying to get you, you know, and you don't have permission, you run away, you know, and yep. it tells them what to do. Exactly. And all they have to do is sing the song and it has the steps throughout the whole song. Oh, wow. I got to do this. I got to run, run, run. I got to yell. I'm going to tell somebody. Police show up. They say, how'd you get away? That silly, stupid prevention, proactive song that happened eight years before that saved their life. Right. And, you know, level three sex offenders aren't people taking people out for lunch or mm -hmm. ice cream or taking them to church. It's not. Yeah. OK, so without proactive prevention programs, we have a lot of situations. We have drugs. We have promiscuous worlds that we don't really want to be part of, but we're doing it because we got to fit in. Right. You know, we're forced. Young ladies are forced to do things that they don't want to do because they didn't have that self-worth and self-esteem about themselves and tell somebody, yeah, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, this ain't working for me. You right. know, on my time, I will decide when it's my time and who I would like to be with and do yeah. not your decision because you're putting pressure on me right. and I'm not strong enough to stand up to it. Right. So again, that proactive, it helps across the board for everything, even just being a good human being. Yeah. I mean, when, when do we teach our children, you know, sit them down and say, you know, are there any children in your school that people always pick on or do you see, you know, people making, being made fun of, yeah. do you see that in school? I mean, how many parents have ever asked that? Right. How many parents even asked really what goes on in their school? I mean, exactly. And, 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 and say, well, you know, why don't you, why don't you bring them these cookies today? Why don't you mm -hmm. go up to them and, 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 and ask them if, if everything's okay today, why yeah. don't you take time to be a better person than everyone else that's picking on that poor person? Yeah. Because we now see it all through all, all through everywhere, mass that shootings happens. in school and all these things, but these poor kids have been so picked on and abused and you, and you listen to the comments of what's yeah. going on around it going, Oh yeah, we threw, we knew it was going to be so-and-so that would shoot up a school if if it ever happened and we're like why because there was no proactive prevention nobody took time to help the kid get through life yeah when he was down on his luck when when he had nothing when no one was there for him everybody was picking on him because he didn't have clothes that looked like your clothes he right. didn't have clothes that fit like your clothes right he didn't have or she didn't have these things and these people pick on him un unmercifully and they yeah. hurt themselves or hurt other people. When do we teach that? When do we tell people? When did we teach our children at a young age that you don't do that? Exactly. We don't. When we do don't. we teach them to reach out to everyone and help? Yeah. You know what? It's it's just it needs to be done in a way that our it can well, first off, it can happen immediately. Everything can happen immediately just by exactly. teaching them, you know, here it is. This is what we'd like to do. This is what we're going to try. And you have to say it over and over and over and over and over again. I yeah. mean, I must have told my children a million times, no, no, you can't do that. And this is why. No, you can't do it. Did they do it sometimes? Probably because they're kids. We're all yeah. kids. Okay. We were all kids. We all lived life. We knew. We knew what we're talking about. Yeah, it sounds great as adults that we tell, oh, we shouldn't do this. Right. But nobody taught us back then that we shouldn't do it that way either. And right. back then we didn't have that self-esteem and self-worth because that wasn't embedded in us. So yeah. a lot of us went down which road? Drinking, drugs, alcohol, you know, from, from bed to bed trying to find that right person because whatever it was was taken from you. You know, I always say that, that it factor. Yeah. Whatever you call it is what, I, when whatever I call it was taken from us in our yeah. life. And now we just search endlessly. We think it's love, but it's not, yeah. you know, we don't, we don't understand it because we were never proactively taught that or, 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 Hey, you know, this is something that we're going to, we need to prevent down the road. This is, you know, we, we, we just say words. Exactly. In our society.
and we need to show and and hold our children by the hand and explain to them in 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 a kid friendly way and not not say it because I said so. Exactly. You know, um, that's why most of us leave our houses when we're 18 years old or or even younger, because our parents always told us, don't do that because we never had a reason why we couldn't do it. If they gave us reasons, maybe it would have been a little bit different. You know, yeah. it would have been different. Well, I don't want you to do this because I love you and you could get hurt. And this is my fear. Yeah, that would have been OK. I get it. I get it. I understand. I have your concerns. Right. Okay. You know, yes, I'm I'm playing this sport. I like it. I understand that you want me to be safe. I get it. You know, just just telling them don't do things because exactly is is doesn't work. No, it doesn't work at all. And I, you know, I when you were talking about bullying, I thought about, oh my goodness, you know, most kids they don't even um tell their parents when they're getting bullied. Most kids, most parents have no clue what is going on when their when their kids are getting bullied. And, you know, but if they if if we're proactive and we tell our 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 kids, if you see someone getting picked on, you know do this or, you know, maybe go and tell a teacher or do something or whatever the case may be. There are so many kids that have taken their own life because they've been bullied or they've been cyber bullied and they didn't want to deal with it anymore. And that has been an issue also, sure. you know, and, and these are some things that we could approach when the kids are little through music, you know, to teach kids, you know, and to teach kids about bullying and, and why it's bad too, you know, People don't, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people in this world, a lot of people that contemplated suicide, okay, because they were in a situation of either bullying or they don't see the way out. They don't see, they don't see life 20 years from now. They yeah. only see today that it's happening so bad. And we don't take the time to sit down and explain to them, you know what, in 10 years, 20 years. You may be Elon Musk. You may be president of the United States. You may be somebody that 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 creates the measles shot and the mumps or the smallpox, or yeah. or you may just be walking by somebody's house one day and the fire and there's a fire in there and you run in and you save that person. You know, there's so much the world has to offer to us, yeah. and we need to start explaining it to them in a really fun way that they aren't going to be this way all their life. Exactly. Explain to them in a couple of years, things will change and, and you'll be doing this and you'll be driving your car and, you know, proactive, you know, teach them how to save a little bit of money to the side. And, you know, when you're 16, you can, you know, you might want to get a car or 18 or whatever it is that you know parents will allow their children to drive and 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 to have their own vehicle but let them work at build, putting money away for that just don't buy them it right know? let them let them earn it let them know that in in 10 years or 5 years I'm saving for this and in 10 years because then it means something to them exactly exactly you know? and they'll be careful and they'll cherish that item because it's so, something they work so hard to have and, you know, proactive since you were day one, you know, you're, you're, you're learning how to be, or even inspire them into, into different fields, you right. know, let them proactively see, seek out different fields. Oh, what's a fireman do? What's a lawyer do? What's a doctor do? Right. What, you know, what does a psychologist do? What is, what does a veterinarian do? What's a plumber do? Right. You know, start teaching them these things that, you know, if you become a plumber, you help people do this. You know, you can make good money and survive and pay for your family, you know, if that's what you decide to do. Right. And take the time to explain it because then they have something to work towards. Exactly. You know? I mean, remember when we were kids, we'd walk around with a fireman hat on or something. And yeah, I'm a fireman, I'm going to be a rocket. I'm going to be a astronaut. Right. Gonna, I don't see that. You know what I do see a lot of? I see going into a place and I look around and I say, oh my gosh, that poor little kid over there really doesn't have a chance. Yeah. Because you see how things are being interacted with them. And yeah. I ask my adult friends all the time, 
I say, have you ever been to a place where you see a child and you say, oh my God, that kid doesn't have a chance? Yeah. Every one of my friends say yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I tell them? That's not the same kid. We don't see the same child. So think of how many kids there are. Yeah. So again, that's really the only reason why Little Iguana is proactive because if you teach them how to ride a bike correctly and wear a helmet, you know what? They don't fall, hit their head and go into a coma. Right. If you tell them look both ways before you cross the street. And what this means is left, right, left again. They don't get hit by a car and die or in a exactly. coma. If we teach them about getting permission and what to do in a proactive prevention way. Yeah. See on the news that so-and-so is missing. Right. Okay. So that's why I just urge everybody, check us out share some information with us people if they need to talk contact us we don't care we'll talk to anybody obviously because that's just who we are yeah. we were brought up that way so that's kind of why my whole focus has always been save the young kids because this way they don't live a life that i lived they don't live a life that really put me down the wrong path in life until mm -hmm. i grew up right and all those years were wasted. All those wandering, wandering years were wasted. Right. I could have done so much more. And so yeah. many of us could have done so much more. A hundred percent. That's 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 my story, lady, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. <laughs> now, if you had to give a couple of takeaways from what we talked about today, what would be the, like, the most important things that you'd like to emphasize to tell our listeners? I would say that the most important thing is take time for each one of your child, each one of your children, focus on teaching them proactively things, really focus on not just saying words, but actually showing them what you mean. I know people say it's common sense, a lot of the things we teach, but so many children are not here today because we thought common sense was something that they just yeah. had. And we have to learn it. So take the time, teach your kids, hug your kids, kiss your kids every day before they walk out that door. Make it a pact that you always hug each other and tell them that you love them. Yep. And then that will make their world even better as well. And yours and your 100%. own. So. Yes. That's great advice. You know, it's so true. So true. I love what you do. I think, you know, you, you've done an amazing job putting this foundation together. Now, if people want to contact you, how could they contact you? Well, they just go to littleiguanausa.org. That's L-I-L and then iguana, I-G-U-A-N-A-U-S-A.org. Check it out. Go online. Go to our social media. You know, we ask everybody to uh, like, share, and follow us if you can. Um, any information that you need from us, please check us out. And we're also looking for affiliates that would like to spread our information and potentially make some money at the same time. Saving lives, making money. What a world, huh? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh my that God. replaces the kicking butt taking names. Okay. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be politically correct. Okay. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my God. This has been great. Thank you so much, Jimmy, for coming on the show. I hope you know that Jimmy is in our podcast community. He is one of our podcast experts and he has his own podcast. So when you come and you look for our website, also look for Little Iguanas. They have their own podcast with their all their, their uh, podcasts listed below their uh, URL. And we'll share that in the uh, description box and give them a, a ch check out all their previous ones. And, you know, this is something you really want to do prevent it. You, you know, you want to be proactive because you want to take care of your children and you want to make sure they have a healthy, happy and productive life all throughout their entire life. So check out Little Iguanas because they are an amazing, amazing program. And I love the fact that you guys use music as your, your main way of teaching children. I think that's so powerful. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Appreciate you very much. Okay. Very I'll talk nice. to you soon. You too. You have a great night also. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.